Indra, Sanskrit, Indra is a Vedic deity in Hinduism, a guardian deity Inda, Pali in Buddhism, and the king of the highest heaven called Saudharmakalpa in Jainism. His mythologies and powers are similar to other Indo-European deities such as Jupiter, Perun, Perkunas, Tyrannus, Zeus, and Thor. In the Vedas, Indra is the king of Svarga heaven and the Devas. He is the god of the heavens, lightning, thunder, storms, rains, river flows, and war. Indra is the most referred to deity in the Rigveda. He is celebrated for his powers, and the one who kills the great symbolic evil malevolent type of Asura named Vritra who obstructs human prosperity and happiness. Indra destroys Vritra and his deceiving forces and thereby brings rains and the sunshine as the friend of mankind. His importance diminishes in the post-Vedic Indian literature where he is depicted as a powerful hero but one who is getting in trouble with his drunken, hedonistic and adulterous ways, and the god who disturbs Hindu monks as they meditate because he fears self-realized human beings may become more powerful than him. Indra rules over the much-sought Deva's realm of rebirth within the some Sara doctrine of Buddhist traditions. However, like the Hindu texts, Indra also is a subject of ridicule and reduced to a figurehead status in Buddhist texts, shown as a god that suffers rebirth and redeath. In the Jainism traditions, like Buddhism and Hinduism, Indra is the king of gods and a part of Jain rebirth cosmology. He is also the god who appears with his wife Indrani to celebrate the auspicious moments in the life of a Jain Tirthankara, an iconography that suggests the king and queen of gods everentially marking the spiritual journey of a Jina. Indra's iconography shows him wielding a lightning thunderbolt known as Vajra, riding on a white elephant known as Aravada. In Buddhist iconography the elephant sometimes features three heads, while Jaina icons sometimes show the elephant with five heads. Sometimes a single elephant is shown with four symbolic tusks. Indra's heavenly home is on or near Mount Meru also called Sumeru. Topic. Etymology and nomenclature The etymological roots of Indra are unclear, and it has been a contested topic among scholars since the 19th century, one with many proposals. The significant proposals have been root eind u, or rain drop based on the Vedic mythology that he conquered rain and brought it down to earth. Root eind, or, equipped with great power. This was proposed by Vopadeva. Root idh or, kindle, and ina or, strong. Root inda, or, igniter for his ability to bring light and power indriya, that ignites the vital forces of life prana. This is based on Shatapatha Brahmana. Root item draw, or, it seeing, which is a reference to the one who first perceived the self-sufficient metaphysical Brahman. This is based on Aitareya Upanishad. Roots in ancient Indo-European, Indo-Aryan deities. 
For example, states John Colaruso, as a reflex of Proto Indo European asterisk H Nur, Greek Anner, Sabine Nero, Avestan Nar, Umbrian Neris, Old Irish Nert, Ascetic Nart, and others which all refer to most manly or hero. Colonial era scholarship proposed that Indra shares etymological roots with Zend Andra derived from Old High German Antra, or Jedru of Old Slavonic, but Max Muller critiqued these proposals as untenable. Later scholarship has linked Vedic Indra to the European Einar, the Great One, Abaza, Ubik, and Inara of Hittite mythology. Colaruso suggests a Pontic origin and that both the phonology and the context of Indra in Indian religions is best explained from Indo-Aryan roots and a Circassian etymology i.e. asterisk Inra, he is known in Burmese as pronounced Ada M, in Thai as Fraxanthar Phra in, in Khmer as, pronounced Praya Intra, in Malay as Indera, in Javanese as, Bathara Indra, in Kannada as Indra Indra, in Telugu as Indrudu Indrudu or Indra in Malayalam as Indra Indran, in Tamil as Intran Inthiran, Chinese as Dishitian Dishishan, and in Japanese as Dishitian Teshakaten, Indra has many epithets in the Indian religions, notably Sakra, Sakra Powerful One, Vershan, Vershan Mighty, Vertrahan, Vertrahan Slayer of Vertra, Megavahana, Megavahana He Whose Vehicle is Cloud, Devaraja, Devaraja King of Deities, Devendra, Devendra the Lord of Deities, Surendra, Surendra Chief of Deities, Svargapati, Svargapati the Lord of Heaven, Vajrapani, Vajrapani He Who Has Thunderbolt, Vajra, in His Hand, and Vasava, Vasava Lord of Vasus. Topic Origins Indra is of ancient but unclear origin. Aspects of Indra as a deity are cognate to other Indo-European gods, they are either thunder gods such as Thor, Perun, and Zeus who share parts of his heroic mythologies, act as king of gods, and all are linked to rain and thunder. The similarities between Indra of Hindu mythologies and of Thor of Nordic and Germanic mythologies are significant, states Max Muller. Both Indra and Thor are storm gods, with powers over lightning and thunder, both carry hammer or equivalent, for both the weapon returns to their hand after they hurl it, both are associated with bulls in the earliest layer of respective texts, both use thunder as a battle cry, both are heroic leaders, both protectors of mankind, both are described with legends about milking the cloud cows. Both are benevolent giants, gods of strength, of life, of marriage and the healing gods, both are worshipped in respective texts on mountains and in forests. Michael Janda suggests that Indra has origins in the Indo-European asterisk trig wilumos or rather asterisk trig t wilumos smasher of the enclosure of Ritra, Vala and Diye Snutayos, impeller of streams, the liberated rivers, corresponding to Vedic Apam Asia's agitator of the waters, brave and heroic Inara or Inra, which sounds like Indra, is mentioned among the gods of the Mitanni, a Hurrian-speaking people of Hittite region, Indra as a deity had a presence in northeastern Asia Minor, as evidenced by the inscriptions on the bogus Khoi clay tablets dated to about 1400 BCE. 
This tablet mentions a treaty, but its significance is in four names it includes everentially as Mi It Ra, Uru W Na, In Da Ra, and Na Sa At T Ia. These are respectively, Mitra, Varuna, Indra, and Nasatya Asvan of the Vedic pantheon as revered deities, and these are also found in Avestan pantheon but with Indra and Naonhatya as demons. This at least suggests that Indra and his fellow deities were in vogue in South Asia and Asia Minor by about mid 2nd millennium BCE. Indra is praised as the highest god in 250 hymns of the Rigveda, a Hindu scripture dated to have been composed sometime between 1700 and 1100 BCE. He is co-praised as the Supreme in another fifty hymns, thus making him one of the most celebrated Vedic deities. He is also mentioned in ancient Indo-Iranian literature, but with a major inconsistency when contrasted with the Vedas. In the Vedic literature, Indra is a heroic god. In the Avestan ancient, pre -Islamic Iranian texts such as V.D. 10.9, D.K. 9.3 and GBD 27.6-34.27, Indra, or accurately Andra, is a gigantic demon who opposes truth. In the Vedic texts, Indra kills the archenemy and demon Vritra who threatens mankind. In the Avestan texts, Vritra is not found. Indra is called Vr, Tragna, literally, slayer of obstacles, in the Vedas, which corresponds to Varithranya of the Zoroastrian noun Varithranya. According to David Anthony, the old Indic religion probably emerged among Indo-European immigrants in the contact zone between the Zirivshan River, present-day Uzbekistan, and present-day Iran. It was a syncretic mixture of old Central Asian and new Indo-European elements, which borrowed distinctive religious beliefs and practices", from the Bactria Margiana culture. At least 383 non-Indo-European words were found in this culture, including the god Indra and the ritual drink Soma. According to Anthony, Many of the qualities of Indo-Iranian god of might, victory, Varithrifna, were transferred to the god Indra, who became the central deity of the developing Old Indic culture. Indra was the subject of 250 hymns, a quarter of the Rig Veda. He was associated more than any other deity with soma, a stimulant drug, perhaps derived from ephedra, probably borrowed from the BMAC religion. His rise to prominence was a peculiar trait of the old Indic speakers. Topic: <inaudible> Hinduism. <inaudible> Indra was a prominent deity in the Vedic era of Hinduism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Vedic texts. Over a quarter of the 1,028 hymns of the Rigveda mention Indra, making him the most referred to deity than any other. These hymns present a complex picture of Indra, but some aspects of Indra are oft repeated. Of these, the most common theme is where he as the god with thunderbolt kills the evil serpent Vritra that held back rains, and thus released rains and land-nourishing rivers. For example, the Rigvedic hymn 1.32 dedicated to Indra reads, 
the hymns of Rigveda declare him to be the king that moves and moves not, the friend of mankind who holds the different tribes on earth together. In one interpretation by Oldenburg, the hymns are referring to the snaking thunderstorm clouds that gather with bellowing winds Vritra. Indra is then seen as the storm god who intervenes in these clouds with his thunderbolts, which then release the rains nourishing the parched land, crops and thus humanity. In another interpretation by Hillebrand, Indra is a symbolic sun god Surya and Vritra is a symbolic winter giant historic many cycles of ice age, cold in the earliest, not the later, hymns of Rigveda. The Vritra is an ice demon of colder Central Asia and northern latitudes, who holds back the water. Indra is the one who releases the water from the winter demon, an idea that later metamorphosed into his role as storm god. According to Griswold, this is not a completely convincing interpretation, because Indra is simultaneously a lightning god, a rain god and a river-helping god in the Vedas. Further, the Vritra demon that Indra slew is best understood as any obstruction, whether it be clouds that refuse to release rain or mountains or snow that hold back the water, even though Indra is declared as the king of gods in some verses, there is no consistent subordination of other gods to Indra. In Vedic thought, all gods and goddesses are equivalent and aspects of the same eternal abstract Brahman, none consistently superior, none consistently inferior. All gods obey Indra, but all gods also obey Varuna, Vishnu, Rudra and others when the situation arises. Further, Indra also accepts and follows the instructions of Savitar, solar deity. Indra, like all Vedic deities, is a part of henotheistic theology of ancient India. Indra is not a visible object of nature in the Vedic texts, nor is he a personification of any object, but that agent which causes the lightning, the rains, and the rivers to flow. His myths and adventures in the Vedic literature are numerous, ranging from harnessing the rains, cutting through mountains to help rivers flow, helping land becoming fertile, unleashing sun by defeating the clouds, warming the land by overcoming the winter forces, winning the light and dawn for mankind putting milk in the cows, rejuvenating the immobile into something mobile and prosperous, and in general, he is depicted as removing any and all sorts of obstacles to human progress. The Vedic prayers to Indra, states Jan Gonda, generally ask, "...produce success of this right, throw down those who hate the materialized Brahman." Indra is often presented as the twin brother of Agni fire, another major Vedic deity. Yet, he is also presented to be the same, states Max Muller, as in Rigvedic hymn 2.1.3, which states, Thou Agni, art Indra, a bull among all beings, thou art the wide ruling Vishnu, worthy of adoration. Thou art the Brahman. He is also part of one of many Vedic trinities as Agni, Indra, and Surya, representing the creator maintainer destroyer aspects of existence in Hindu thought. <laughs> Upanishads The ancient Aitareya Upanishad equates Indra, along with other deities, with Atman soul, self, in the Vedanta's spirit of internalization of rituals and gods. 
It begins with its cosmological theory in verse 1.1.1 by stating that, "...in the beginning, Atman, verily one only, was here, no other blinking thing whatever, he bethought himself, let me now create worlds." This soul, which the text refers to as Brahman as well, then proceeds to create the worlds and beings in those worlds wherein all Vedic gods and goddesses such as Sun God, Moon God, Agni and other divinities become active cooperative organs of the body. The Atman thereafter creates food, and thus emerges a sustainable non-sentient universe, according to the Upanishad. The eternal Atman then enters each living being making the universe full of sentient beings, but these living beings fail to perceive their Atman. The first one to see the Atman as Brahman, asserts the Upanishad, said, Item Adarsha or I have seen it. Quote dot. Others then called this first seer as Item Dra or it seeing, which over time came to be cryptically known as Indra, because, claims Aitareya Upanishad, everyone including the gods like short nicknames. The passing mention of Indra in this Upanishad, states Alain Daniello, is a symbolic folk etymology. The section 3.9 of the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad connects Indra to thunder, thunderbolt, and release of waters. In section 5.1 of the Avyakta Upanishad, Indra is praised as he who embodies the qualities of all gods. Topic: Post-Vedic texts. In post-Vedic texts, Indra is depicted as an intoxicated hedonistic god. His importance declines, and he evolves into a minor deity in comparison to others in the Hindu pantheon, such as Shiva, Vishnu, or Devi. In Hindu texts, Indra is sometimes known as an aspect avatar of Shiva, he is depicted as the father of Vali in the Ramayana and Arjuna in the Mahabharata. He becomes a source of nuisance reigns in the Puranas, out of anger and with an intent to hurt mankind. But, Krishna as an avatar of Vishnu, comes to the rescue by lifting Mount Gavardhana on his fingertip, and letting mankind shelter under the mountain till Indra exhausts his anger and relents. Also, according to Mahabharata Indra, disguised himself as a Brahmin approached Karna and asked for his Kavak and Kandal as a charity. Although being aware of his true identity, Karna peeled off his kavak and kandal and fulfilled the wish of Indra. Pleased by this act Indra gifted Karna a dart called Vasavi Shakti. <laughs> Sangam literature, 300 BCE–300 AD Sangam literature of the Tamil language contains more stories about Indra by various authors. In Silapathakaram Indra is described as Malai Venkudai Manavan, Malai Venkudai Manavan literally meaning Indra with the pearl garland and white umbrella. The Sangam literature also describes Indira Vija festival for Indra, the festival for want of rain, celebrated for one full month starting from the full moon in Otrai later name, Sidarai, and completed on the full moon in Puyazi Vaikasi, which coincides with Buddhapurnima. It is described in the epic Salapatikaram in detail.
Topic: <laughs> Relations with other gods. In the Hindu religion, he is married to Shachi, also known as Indrani or Pulomaja. Indra and Shachi have two sons, Chitragupta and Jayanta, and two daughters, Janti and Devasena. Goddess Janti is the spouse of Shukra, while goddess Devasena marries the war god Kartikeya. Topic: Mythology. In the Brahmavivarta Purana, Indra defeats Virtra and releases the waters. Indra asks Vishvakarma to build him a palace, but ultimately decides to leave his life of luxury to become a hermit and seek wisdom. Horrified, Indra's wife Shachi asks the priest Brihaspati to change her husband's mind. He teaches Indra to see the virtues of both the spiritual life and the worldly life. Thus, at the end of the story, Indra learns how to pursue wisdom while still fulfilling his kingly duties. Topic: Iconography. In Rigveda, Indra is described as strong-willed, armed with a thunderbolt, riding a chariot. May the strong heaven make thee the strong wax stronger, strong, for thou art borne by thy two strong bay horses. So, fair of cheek, with mighty chariot, mighty, uphold us, strong-willed, thunder-armed, in battle. Indra's weapon, which he used to kill evil Vritra, is the Vajra or thunderbolt. Other alternate iconographic symbolism for him includes a bow sometimes as a colorful rainbow, a sword, a net, a noose, a hook, or a conch. The thunderbolt of Indra is called Bhadra. In the post Vedic period, he rides a large, four tusked white elephant called Aravada. In sculpture and relief artworks in temples, he typically sits on an elephant or is near one. When he is shown to have two, he holds the Vajra and a bow. In the Shatapatha Brahmana and in Shaktism traditions, Indra is stated to be same as goddess Shodashi, Tripura Sundari, and her iconography is described similar to those of Indra. The rainbow is called Indra's bow, Sanskrit, Indradhanus, Indradhanus. Topic: Buddhism. The Buddhist cosmology places Indra above Mount Sumeru in Trayastrimsha heaven. He resides and rules over one of the six realms of rebirth, the Deva's realm of samsara, that is widely sought in the Buddhist tradition. Rebirth in the realm of Indra is a consequence of very good karma Pali, kama, and accumulated merit during a human life. In Buddhism, Indra is commonly called by his other name, Sakra or Saka, ruler of the Trayastrimsa heaven. Sakra is sometimes referred to as Divanam Indra or Lord of the Devas. Buddhist texts also refer to Indra by numerous names and epithets, as is the case with Hindu and Jain texts. For example, Asvagosha's Buddhakarita in different sections refers to Indra with terms such as the Thousand-Eyed. Puramdara, Lekarshaba, Mahendra, Marutvat, Vallabhid, and Magavat. Elsewhere, he is known as Devrajan, literally, the king of gods. These names reflect a large overlap between Hinduism and Buddhism, and the adoption of many Vedic terminology and concepts into Buddhist thought. Even the term Sakra, which means 
mighty appears in the Vedic texts such as in hymn 5.34 of the Rigveda, in Theravada Buddhism Indra is referred to as Inda in evening chanting such as the Udasanadithanagatha Amina. The Bamaran casket made of gold inset with garnet, dated to be around 60 CE, but some proposals dating it to the 1st century BCE, is among the earliest archaeological evidences available that establish the importance of Indra in Buddhist mythology. The artwork shows the Buddha flanked by gods Brahma and Indra. In China, Korea, and Japan, he is known by the characters Di Shi Tian (Chinese: Shi Ti Huan Yin, Pinyin: Shi Di Huan Yin, Korean: Je Sok Qian, or Huan Yin Wan in Japanese: Tai Shaku Ten, Kanji. In Japan, Indra always appears opposite Brahma, Fantian Japanese, Bantan, in Buddhist art. Brahma and Indra are revered together as protectors of the historical Buddha, Chinese, Shijia Kanji, Shijia also known as Shakyamuni, and are frequently shown giving the infant Buddha his first bath. Although Indra is often depicted like a bodhisattva in the Far East, typically in Tang dynasty costume, his iconography also includes a martial aspect, wielding a thunderbolt from atop his elephant mount. In the Huayan school of Buddhism and elsewhere, the image of Indra's net is a metaphor for the emptiness of all things. In Japan, Indra is one of the twelve devas, as guardian deities, who are found in or around Buddhist temples. Juni Ten. She erred in Japan. Indra has been called Teishaku Ten. He joins these other eleven devas of Buddhism, found in Japan and other parts of Southeast Asia, Indra Teishaku Ten, Agni Ka Ten, Yama Enma Ten, Nirti Risetsu Ten, Vayu Fu Ten, Ashana Ashana Ten, Kubara Taman Ten, Varuna Sway Ten, Brahma Bon Ten, Prithvi Kai Ten, Surya Nit Ten, Chandra Gat Ten. The ceremonial name of Bangkok claims that the city was given by Indra and built by Vishvakarman. Topic Jainism Indra in Jain mythology always serves the Tirthankara teachers. Indra most commonly appears in stories related to Tirthankaras, in which Indra himself manages and celebrates the five auspicious events in that Tirthankara's life, such as Chavan Kalyanik, Janma Kalyanik, Diksha Kalyanik, Kavala Niana Kalyanik, and Moksha Kalyanik. There are 64 Indras in Jaina literature, each ruling over different heavenly realms where heavenly souls who have not yet gained Kaivalya moksha are reborn according to Jainism. Among these many Indras, the ruler of the first Kalpa heaven is the Indra who is known as Saudharma in Digambara, and Sakra in Svetambara tradition. He is most preferred, discussed and often depicted in Jaina caves and marble temples, often with his wife Indrani. They greet the devotee as he or she walks in, flank the entrance to an idol of Jina conqueror, and lead the gods as they are shown celebrating the five auspicious moments in a Jina's life, including his birth. These Indra-related stories are enacted by laypeople in Jainism tradition during special puja worship or festive remembrances. Ref Greater Than Lisa Owen, 2012. Carving Devotion in the Jain Caves at Alora. Brill Academic. pp. 29-33. ISBN 90-04-20629-9.
In South Indian Digambara Jaina community, Indra is also the title of hereditary priests who preside over Jain temple functions. See also <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>